Hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host Kieran Lewis, a freelance graphic designer based in London and today's stream we have the very talented brand designer Kevin Craft. Kevin how are you doing buddy? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's hot over in London but uh, I'm, I'm all good, I'm all good surviving. So uh, how are you feeling about today, your first first day one? I mean uh, I'm doing pretty good, a little nervous but uh, excited so we got you here, dude. Don't worry, I promise you. We're in a in a very safe space. So we've got a lot of chat moderators <laughs> and we're gonna keep everyone nice and nice and safe. So it's all good. Um, and a massive welcome to our wonderful audience. If you're tuning in on YouTube or Behance, massive, massive welcome. Um, you know, in the chat, let us know where you're tuning in from, you know, which part of the world are you streaming in from? It'll be awesome to know more about yourselves. Um, and of course, as always, any questions you guys might have for Kevin, put those in the chat and I'll share them directly with Kevin whilst he's in the process of designing. Um, just a few things to sort of get into before we get into the real flow of it. Uh, if you've missed the previous streams today, uh, you can view the replay on Behance and on YouTube. And you can check out the photographer with Sasha Vinogradova as she pre uh, as she pieces together some pre-rendered elements and Adobe stock images into Photoshop and create some fantastical pieces. Fantastical being the key word. Um, and also, as usual, you don't want to miss the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Jack Watson every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, right before this stream. Uh, so tune in and take those skills to the next level with a new prompt every single day. Kevin, today's your day, buddy. So would you like to tell everyone about who you are and uh, also working on for today? Sure. Um, so my name is Kevin Kraft. I'm a freelance brand designer based in Dallas, Texas. Um, I got my start working as a web designer for Bergdorf Goodman, and I've been working uh, as an art director at several agencies in the past as well. Um, about three years ago, I decided to go off on my own and start my own business as a freelance brand designer um, because I wanted to focus more on brand identity. Uh, and I've just been like really loving that freelance lifestyle ever since. <laughs> nice, <laughs> like, I love that. Uh, so yeah. Um, I've also uh, recently published a domestic course on brand identity design. If anyone's interested, um, that'll be on my Behance page. Nice, nice. We, be, I mean, I've been checking out your work. We had a nice little chat a few days before mm -hmm. you know, we came on the stream and dude, I'm obsessed with your work. It's, it's beautiful and I can <laughs> see, again, um, I'm sure everyone in the chat is super excited to, you know, to see those projects. So I can see you've got a nice little thumbnail of a few projects that you've got up there. Um, is anyone particular that you'd like to maybe show before we get into the real flow of it as in terms of what stuff you are they clickable are they links uh no <laughs> that's a, B, a pdf but i can <laughs> go into my behance and um maybe talk through, through some of the different ones that i have to be honest oh well I mean, as the day sort of progresses, we'll probably jump into a bit my, my brain tricked me there for a second i thought they were they were fun oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you caught me off guard there but um i'll tell you what how about we get into the real flow of um, what you've been working on today for anyone you know for those who have sort of tuned in it'd be great to know Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so today we're going to be working on a logo design and a package design for a coffee shop. Um, we'll be doing that design based off of a cold brew package, um, something that I love uh, and keeps me going basically as a creative director. Um, so yeah, uh, we can kind of like get into that. If yeah, let's do it. Let's jump straight in. And also, I mean, sorry, my, my bad on my part. Um, just to sort of say who's in the chat, we've got a few people just joined in. We've got uh, Voodoo Val, keeping everything moderated. So, hey, we've got Paco, we've got Becca, uh, Jack, Katrina, and uh, Arshad. So, a massive, massive welcome. Uh, and again, like we said, always keep those questions coming in. Uh, and what we'll do is throughout the stream, we'll start throwing those over to Kevin um, whilst he's in the real design flow. But, uh, Kevin, should we jump straight into, straight into the first program and get going? Sure, let's do it. Awesome. Um, so here's how I'm going to kind of like set up the project. Um, the project is called Oak Street and it's based off of a local coffee shop that I frequent in Dallas. Um, so this is kind of like a passion project. <laughs> nice. We love a passion project at Adobe Live. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like, I found that, um, a lot of my like most creative work comes from working on a passion project and that often leads to clients that see it and they're like, oh, like I want something like this. So it kind of like, it helps you in the long run, I feel like. Mm, that's all, I know that's, that's quite a nice point you mentioned because um, with the, you know, with the audience that we have at Adobe Live, it does range, you know, from, mm. from students, graduates, and even those who are in the field for a while. But um, it's always nice to hear from someone practicing, you know, straight in, 
in the mode of it, how do you know kind of get your clients and and the importance of self directed and um, and passion projects too because they are they are very important, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I'm going to walk through first is a creative brief, and this is something that um, I would put together for my client once we meet. Um, so in this creative brief, uh, I kind of get a background of what the client is. Um, so for this one in particular, um, Oak Street is a coffee shop in Dallas, Texas. They're looking to rebrand and package design. They're looking for a rebrand and a package design for their cold brew. They see their space as a place where people of all types come together. They want a logo and a package design that fits within their name and appeals to their target demographic, whom are locals to the neighborhood. They also have a courtyard with large oak trees, uh, and they'd like to use that as an organic theme within their design. So um, this is kind of like uh, an image that I pulled from Unsplash, <laughs> but like, um, no judgment. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, uh, just so they could get a kind of a visual feel of like what mm. this coffee shop space is like. It's a beautiful shot. I mean, I feel like th there is a sort of vibe, isn't there, to, to these kind of like independent, kind of quirky shots, but um, that's if that was in London, I, I'd be there, dude, like a shot. So, <laughs> it's, looking, it's looking good. <laughs> Um, uh, like I know, I know that London's going through kind of a heat wave right now, but, um, for me, like I live in Texas, um, it's always very hot during the summer. And so like, sometimes I go to coffee shops for like the free AC, <laughs> just like, <laughs> just, like ha have a coffee, uh, cool down. Be the um, method. Yeah. Are you, I, I'm, I'm, I've actually succumbed to iced lattes. So I don't know if you're into, or anyone is in the oh, chat, yeah. an iced latte, that will save you during the summer period, especially a heat wave. Um, yeah, iced lattes for the win. Sure. I feel like uh, I started um, kind of lean where I was like cold brew, like nothing else. And now I'm getting like oat milk lattes all the time. It's just getting like nice. more and more expensive. <laughs> See, there's going to be perks to working on a, on a project like this where, you know, you may even get free coffees or you, I mean, that's not oh, yeah. the only reason why you're doing it, but obviously <laughs> it, it helps when you've got an interest in the, in the brand. But um, yeah, it's looking good. So what's the next, the next part of that? that all project? right. Um, so bear with me here. I tried to make this as like realistic as possible. So I made it so um, this coffee shop has already like DIY'd their logo. Um, so they had their like uncle do it or something. Um, <laughs> he, he, he's not a graphic designer. He just like uh, had Photoshop. Uncle um, Oak. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uncle Oak. Um, so they DIY'd their logo, um, and they've realized that their current logo feels too clip arty, which often happens. Um, they want something that's original. Um, this one they think, uh, feels disconnected to their audience. Um, and it's just a bit of a mismatch. Uh, another thing that I do with my clients is, um, I look for descriptor words that are going to help me come up with the actual design. Um, so for this one, uh, a lot of times I, I pull them out of the conversations that we even have. So like or originally they said that they wanted something that was organic or like um, they want something that is friendly and approachable. Um, also something that is like bringing people together. So community. So these are things that I'm going to be thinking about when I'm coming up with their logo and their package design. Nice. I imagine those kind of keywords, it even helps with that brainstorming element as well, isn't it? Where you're kind of um, finding just more simpler ways really to try and streamline, you know, that, that early stage of a project, which is quite nice. So um, I like that you kind of stripped out those descriptive, descriptive words, really cool. Yeah, and it's really just like setting up the blueprint for the design. Like um, for me, whenever I get into the design part, I have like so many ideas or like, I, I just like get overwhelmed because I'm like, this can go so many different ways and mm. I need to figure out what the right way is. So I kind of use these as my guide to kind of like cut the path. Nice, nice. And I know as well, I mean, we'll definitely go into as we go throughout the day, but I know you've got a quite a strategic way of how you operate, which is really, I mean, again, I'm jumping the gun here, but we'll definitely kind of go into the flow. But um, I'll definitely pick your brains with a few questions. And again, any questions in the chat relating to the strategic side to design and of course the design elements, definitely get those in the chat for, for Kevin. Um, okay, so this next page, um, one thing that I definitely wanna share with everyone is like, uh, when I've done package design in the past, 
Uh, I make it very clear that I'm not like a box engineer or like a like an engineer of any kind or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I t- they typically come to me um, with a manufacturer or like I help them finding a manufacturer, and the manufacturer will give me um, essentially the die line for where I'm allowed to design on the package. So for in this case, um, this is a bottle. Um, it's almost like this cool like whiskey shaped Mm. bottle um and they've given me a die line where i'm able to design without it like um, interfering with uh anything else on the bottle so like um it's above like this curve shape here it's not going to get like cut off down there and i can design Mm. within this space Um, There's also like with packaging, uh, nutrition facts, uh, barcodes, the address, like these are all things that are going to come into play uh, with the package and like I'm going to need to think about when I'm actually putting it together. Mm. I think even the way you've kind of curated it as well, it's quite, it's, it just makes it really easy and digestible, I think for for client and also for designer, I think. um, it's funny because we just got a, a comment in the chat from Val. He said, this part um, always makes me a bit nervous. And I guess for any person when they see a brief, if it comes in all gobbledygook, it can be a little bit, oh my goodness me. But when it's in a sort of format like this, it just makes it so much more digestible. Um, so yeah, really great way of, of, of presenting the brief. Yeah, like just to speak to that, um, I I'll, I'll, like I get nervous when I see this part too, because I'm like, how are these things, <laughs> how are these things gonna live together? Or like, um, it, but it's just a matter of double checking your work, um, making sure that you and like another pair of eyes looks over this before it goes to print. Uh, I think especially with package design, because you think about it, it's something that's going to be printed like so many mm. times. So that could be very mm. daunting. Um, but, you know, just like trust yourself. <laughs> You could have others look over it too. Like, uh, like if you if you get if you've been working on it for too long, um, and uh, you want like another pair of eyes on it, that's always helpful. So, so I can't echo that so much. It's like you know, when you're in the zone, and you just your brain needs that almost switch off point where someone else comes in, they see it from a fresh, you know, perspective. You know, even the perspective on the ideas that can come through as well. It's 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 very easy to almost get tunnel vision when you've been on it for for so long. So, um, yeah, totally echo what you just said there. Um, And so the last thing that we'll uh, put together, and I often do this with the client, uh, is I put together an inspiration board that has different designs, but also um, photography. Um, And it's kind of just like a loose uh, interpretation of where the brand can go. Um, I even put in like uh, possible color schemes, Um, but I really want the client to not like go into this blind and kind of like have an idea of uh, what I'm going to be designing uh, rather than like, Mm. than just seeing something and then being completely shocked um, once it's done. Um, And I feel like there's like a little bit of checks and balances there as well. Like, um, Mm. and it ultimately helps with uh, cutting down on revisions. That's a good shout. And I, what, what I like as well, which is interesting to other boards I've seen, mood boards before, um, is the amount you've got there. Because sometimes you might tend to feel like you need to throw the kitchen sink in it or, or, or load just to try and really, I don't want to say use the word sell what your vision is, but try and get them to find that that solution. But you've kind of picked out and you've kind of let them and almost be confident with actually the different ones that you want to kind of work with. Because um, I guess too many things gives them too many to kind of decide from, right? So. Um, yeah, I think I like that you kind of limit to the amount you've uh, you've got on screen. Yeah, I try to not like do too many just in case they um, try and like fuse things together, you know, like <laughs> make uh, it pop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you get like Frankenstein designs. So uh, I, I kind of just try to keep it um, very simple for them in this uh, part of the process. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I do it. Looking good, man. Looking good. And we've got a few, um, uh, some nice comments actually, again, about other people's experiences of when they're working with, with packaging. Uh, we've got Elise Sandra, uh, I hope I said that correctly. Uh, she said, same here. I had to do something uh, where it's all in different language. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. It was something else. Can you imagine uh, <laughs> packaging when you're, even if we're doing it like Arabic, I've worked with Arabic where it's like left to right. So it's uh, or right to left, I should say. Um, so that in itself, when it's a different language, you've got to use that different part of your brain to almost like, understand where you're coming from 
Um, have you had to work with different languages before with, with packaging? Or? Yeah, actually, um, I was going to say uh, the first package design project that I did um, like solely on my own, like uh, when I was first starting out uh, my freelance career was um, for this company in France that did, um, it's actually similar to this. Uh, it's a, it's a, it was a bottle design, but it was um, for uh, Yerba Mate. Um, okay. And uh yeah, everything was in French. <laughs> um, I speak like very limited. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't even go that far. I just know like greetings. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. You've gone from <laughs> intermediate to like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just starting out. Awesome. But um, th that's like where, th where this part like really comes into play. You got to make sure that the copy that you're working with is approved. Um, so that way uh, there's nothing lost in translation. Definitely. Yeah, we, we like approved copy from the copywriter sent to the designers and we can just uh, have the fun parts. But um, that's, that's that's really nice to sort of see the the start of that brief, you know, those pages you've just gone through from the left to the right and and almost, you know, walking through. Um, so that's pretty awesome to sort of see that sort of um, that progress. Yeah. And if anyone's interested, um, maybe if we have time later, I could um, pull up that Behance project and we can kind of like look at that a little bit uh, for that awesome. um, that Euro Mate bottle. Sounds like a plan. And uh, whilst you get into that next part, we've got a, a nice question here from a Miranda who said, does your packaging have to reflect the client's current logo or are they planning on changing that as well? Uh, yeah, so um, they are, uh, it, it depends. Like are, if they're asking in general, it depends on the client. Um, sometimes they already have a logo, but they don't have a package design and you kind of have to work around that. Um, for this, uh, they've decided to do a completely new rebrand. Um, so we'll be first creating uh, the logo, uh, and then we'll be creating a package design that's inspired by that. Nice. Nice. And a uh, lovely question, Miranda. Definitely uh, keep those questions coming, guys, whilst, uh, whilst Kevin's in the real flow of it. So uh, thank you. Um, all right, uh, so I can go into the next uh, step now that we're uh, done with this creative brief. Let's do it. We've got some, uh, so already some good comments, Kevin, while she's designing it. So we've got uh, Elise Andre saying again, she's loving how clear and clean this is. So uh, we're all loving your design so far, dude, and your, and your strategic think way of thinking. <laughs> I mean, that's good news. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what it looks like at the end. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, 17 minutes in, but we're good, we're good. So, um, I don't know, like, I thought maybe at this part, we can kind of like, I'd like to know what you think, um, Kieran, about this logo. Like, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think could be better about it? What's my vibe? Uh, I mean, it, ugh, ooh, I put me in a spot there. That tree, my brain starts to think, how would that work? Even on sort of types of clothing or even not mm -hmm. clothing, but on the material, because there's so much, even if you zoom in, there's a lot of uh, kind of granular detail happening there. I'm not saying to make it super like basic vector, but some things get slightly lost if it wasn't a really small reduced size. I mean, you'll never get it at a postage stamp size, but you know what I mean? If it's, yeah. if it's really tiny. So um, that's my only kind of worry about that. Um, no, the font, I mean, the font's quite clean to me. I like the A, that sort of round, round all kind of style. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's everyone else thinking in the chat? What's your what's your initial vibes when you see Oak Street? Are you falling in love? Are you thinking the font could change, the imagery? Throw it in there. Um, what's your thoughts, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, that's a really great point. Is um, I feel like this part of it doesn't really scale that well, um, and I could definitely see some printing issues uh, along the way. Um, also, to me, like if I saw this, I would be like. What is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, uh, one, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't necessarily know if it would be like a coffee shop or something. It would really depend on mm. um, like where I saw it. Mm. Uh, the topography, I think this font is actually like, uh, the font is not bad. Um, I like how the A is kind of curved. Like, I think that there's like a friendliness to that um, mm. and like approachability. Like, that, that was one of the words we were thinking about. Um, but it does feel like it's really disconnected from uh, the actual mark. Um, it feels like kind of like two things that are kind of just being like forced together rather than two things mm. that are like have a little bit of harmony. 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to like start with that. And if anyone in the comments like <laughs> has anything to say, uh, like I'd be happy to hear it. Yeah, we've. Got, I mean, everyone's. We've got Becca who's said that she's getting wine vibes from me at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Red or white, um, <laughs> definitely. Um, and we've got Miranda said um, the imagery uh, could be simpler for merchandise, which she kind of said as well. So very good point. Um, and Lisandra said, yeah, the tree is not giving me coffee vibes. So um, yeah, we have to, um, it's that early stage, but it's always nice to kind of get everyone's perspectives and, um, you know, sort of thoughts on what everyone's, what everyone's vibe is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is why we're doing a rebrand, right? We're um, analyzing the old logo and um, we're going to try and make something new. I mean, if it was amazing from the start, there, there would be no rebrand projects. So yeah. It's almost like <laughs> that's the end of the every live stream today. And uh, <laughs> there we go. But no, we're in the flow of it. So um, yeah, you're in a good place, uh, audience, for, for watching some rebranding work. Um, so next, uh, just to save some time, I've... Uh, taken my sketches from my sketchbook um, and I kind of like <laughs> I live trace them so that they look nice on this board. <laughs> um, I, I usually use like just like scrap paper and pencil um, nice. but I put together some logo ideas um, to start with just so you don't have to like watch me draw live. <laughs> oh dude uh, you're in a good place for that I mean <laughs> we, we would have loved to no pressure now. You have to draw, to draw live on a... It's looking good, though. I would have to get more than a webcam for that. <laughs> I would have to get, like, a... I don't know, like a a camera that goes, like, above or something. Like a bird's eye, kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That could be for next stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and I've also put together some loose designs for uh, what the bottle could look like. Um, there's some screen printing action going on over here. Uh, I think I've been when I've been thinking about it, like I want to incorporate something natural in it um, that has to do with like an oak tree. So like maybe the leaves, um, maybe like we play around with uh, one that's screen printed or one that's an actual label. Um, mm. We're just we're gonna have to find out uh, <laughs> about once the we get into hole it. Keeps on going, and I can see on the right hand side. You've, is that the coffee beans as well that you've? Um, yeah. You've put in there? Like uh, that could be another element that we play around with is um, the coffee beans and like how they they have this like line down the middle, the way that a leaf has a line down the middle. Um, I think that there's connections there that we can work with. Definitely. And I can see, you know, those in the chat, they're already drawing those, those connections are already draw, being drawn up quite quickly. We've got Miranda who's on it. I love that question. So she said, what info do we need to know about the coffee shop, but also where do those beans come from? So we touched on, you know, those elements where we could actually maybe pull in some, um, almost like a nice bit of a nice deeper history behind the brand as well. So that mm -hmm. can kind of come in from a visual way. Um, and then also as a final part of questions, uh, what do they want their space to feel like? Professional, cozy, uh, boho? I don't know what boho means. <laughs> Bohemian. Um, Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there is a slang in England, London for that, but I think it's a bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean that's a very good point. Again, the vibe. I mean, we saw that initial image in the brief, right? And the and the the, um, the interior. So you kind of get a, a look and feel around it. But um, what's your thoughts on that? Like the kind of vibe that you maybe want to maybe go a bit too ahead of myself here. But what kind of vibe in terms of the design based on the interior? Yeah, like I would say that um, since I'm basing this off of a coffee shop that I like. <laughs> Um, the types of people that go there are um, people that are remote workers usually, um, or they're people that just want to like catch up with their friends over a coffee. Yes. Um, they typically are uh, like less corporate and more like uh, maybe they have their own companies or like maybe they are um, they're working like uh, in tech remote um, just because they like the freedom of like being able to go to a coffee shop and work. Um, so I like I think another part of the brief to remember is um, they're thinking about like different people coming together. So like um, it's something that uh, should appeal to um, more than one uh, demographic, I would say. I think mean, there's a lot of them. Um, you've, you've, you've made a really good point what you said there. The idea of bringing people together. I mean, like a, a, a place like a coffee shop, you know, does that. But especially those keywords like oak um, and then their, their kind of relation to nature, you know, the idea of people bringing, being, being together, almost being one. Um, there's a lot you can do visually, even with typography, right? Mm -hmm. That sort of curve and that connection between 
type and imagery. Um, I'm excited to sort of see how this how this pans out. But um, but yeah, no, good question, Miranda. Um, and definitely keep, keep those coming. Any questions related to the brand, the design, and also about Kevin as well, and about his, his design background. Um, you know, pick his brains um, via myself, and then we'll get those questions <laughs> out there. Yeah, definitely. Like if you um, want to know like how I got started or anything like that, like no question is off the table. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good question. Let's start with that actually. How did you get in? I mean, whilst you're kind of showing, but how did you um, kind of get into what you're doing now? You mentioned obviously you went freelance quite recently, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, where do I even start? <laughs> I, uh, I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design and I, uh, I studied graphic design. I got uh, a bachelor's in that. Um, and I actually, when I um, graduated, uh, I started freelancing. <laughs> um, and uh, I remember like, um, I was just like freelancing and I was kind of like, this is temporary, um, but I'm gonna work like uh, like in an actual like design agency or like in-house somewhere. Um, yeah. And I did those things and um, they were very fun, but like, uh, I feel like there is a freedom of creativity that I got through freelancing mm. um, that I just like wasn't getting anywhere else. Um, so that's kind of like how I started with that was like, you know, like I worked in house for a little bit, um, worked at agencies for a little bit. Um, well, not a little bit, 10 years. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the quickest, the quickest little bit. Just ever, a little right? bit, <laughs> just a second. Um, but um, I, uh, I don't know, like th that kind of led down this path where I was kind of like, um, like, can I do this? Like, is this sustainable? And it ended up being like one of the best things that I ever did for myself. And I, I like, I feel like nice. I'm doing my best work right now. Amazing, amazing. That's that's an awesome story. And I think a lot of, um, like we said at the beginning, there's a lot of, a range of people um, that we have that tune in with Adobe Live. And like I said, from students, graduates, professionals in the industry for, for years, or even those who are just completely new to design and just starting out. And I think when you share these kind of stories or, you know, what you just said there, that's great because it kind of gives, you know, hopefully people that inspiration to kind of go off and do their own thing or, um, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a daunting thing, right? Going, going freelance and yeah, there's a lot of things to do, but like you said, and I can totally echo it once you're in it and you can sustain it. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And like you do freelance too. So like you, uh, <laughs> you understand how it boat. is. <laughs> I'm in that boat, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that, on that freelance journey. So for sure. So uh, I'm loving these icons though, dude. So you drew these and then scanned them straight in? No, yeah. Right? How did you... okay. okay. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's not that easy. Um, I, I haven't used a scanner in so long, actually. Uh, I have one, but I'm just like too lazy to scan things in. So I always use my phone. Um, and so, <laughs> do that. so I nice. get to, I get to an area that has like decent lighting. Um, and then I just like take uh, a photo um, over with my phone. And then um, I think it's notes. Like um, if you're on a, an iPhone uh... notes has like this really good feature where um, if you take a photo with it, it turns it into um, a sketch and it also turns it into a PDF. So I don't have to like do any wow, saving. I didn't know that, yeah. okay. That's a brain changer. Okay, game changer. Yeah. So. Awesome. That's not lazy, dude. That's resourceful. I like I like <laughs> the way of I like the way of thinking, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just like um, I don't know. My printer is like not that great. So like um, to have to like connect to it all the time, uh, I just mm. feel like it it takes time. So like um, I usually like if I print something um, professionally, I usually do it at a print shop. So um, yeah, that's like how I got them in here. Um, and then uh, Adobe has made Live Trace like so easy now. So I just press mm. like the default button and then it uh, immediately- and then magic happens. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, yeah. and actually, yeah, the wonderful video also mentioned a very good point because Adobe Capture also does a very similar thing. So oh. if that's a new tool uh, for anyone, even myself, um, definitely check that out because it's these little, uh, these little gems that we're giving you guys and that, and you know, ladies that are, that are going to be really, really helpful um, and also make the whole process a bit more streamlined, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, it's awesome to sort of see your different variations of, uh, of icons. Yeah, so that's our, uh, our pro tip uh, for that section. Um, 
but so here what I've done is I've kind of thought about uh, leaves and like coffee beans and um, I also think that the letter O is like very distinct and there's a lot of different things that you can do with it um, so that is like some inspiration uh, for these sketches um when i put these together i usually do a lot of sketches like uh we're talking like 50 or more <laughs> no um, a whole entire moleskin book I yeah love that. <laughs> uh i usually just do them on scratch paper but i just like keep going uh i usually give myself an hour or two to just like kind of like go through it all mm. um and then what i do is i um i create something like this like a ellipse um and then i'll make it like a, a really bright color like let's say um this yellow and so i'll mark the ones that i like the best uh and my goal here is to have uh, at least like five or maybe six or maybe even more um, that I think are strong to kind of like get started. Like maybe they're just like seeds of designs for now. Mm. Um, and then uh, what I like about doing that versus like just doing one is that um, I'll go through and um, vectorize all of them. And then uh, the ones that I don't use, like maybe I can use them for social media or something like that. Or maybe it could be nice. like um, a starting point for another client. Like maybe I make mm. I made this like awesome leaf shape, and now I can use it in almost like a, a bank for like uh, like later use. Like maybe I have another another client that is wanting something that has a leaf in it. I like so that. I like that. I'm all about like <laughs> making uh, this like efficient and like um, I don't I don't like uh, wasting time. I don't think anyone does, but like. Uh, I want everything to kind of like have its own purpose. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I like that. And um, sorry, just to jump to what you said as well, I think what's quite nice is you're doing stuff on the go as well. So even if, I don't know whether you're drawing these when you're out and about or if you're even on public transport, but you're still being, it's not like you have to wait until you get home on the computer and then start designing. You're actually doing stuff on the go, out and about, and then you can bring it in later. So it's, you're still keeping things very much streamlined. Um, and also it's quite fun as well, right? To put pen to paper. Yeah. Um, I also, I'm yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go for it, dude. Okay. <laughs> Another thing that I um, have found that's like really good for content is I have this like, um, like iPhone stand and I'll just like place it to the side on my computer. Um, and then as I'm making all these vectors, um, I do that time lapse thing. Um, and so uh, nice. then people can see like me in real time making these uh, different logos. I love that. I love that. You, you were made for the social metaverse. <laughs> I love that. Just keep it on brand with them. Um, and that's actually quite a nice time to definitely check, check out. I mean, after our stream, of course, um, check out a lot of Kevin's work on on his social because you can see a lot of those, um, like you mentioned, those time lapses of, uh, of beautiful work. But obviously right now we're in the flow of it. So um, definitely stay tuned. And of course, get those questions in, um, even it's related to design, related to his background. Um, or even if it's like, what music does he like whilst he's designing? Get those questions in, no questions about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, um, so another thing that I would like to talk about is um, whenever I have like um, a design, like I said, like I like to keep some of the pieces and use them for later on. So that's kind of like what I've done here. These are all pieces of other projects um, that have like very basic shapes and I can use them as a starting point for when I'm putting these logos together. Um, so, all right, let's start with um, maybe this shape. Or actually, even better, um, why don't I show you how I made this? <laughs> yes, we like to see from the from the get-go how, yeah. how it's, <laughs> let's, how let's it's see worked. it from scratch. <laughs> nice, nice. You're in a good place for that. <laughs> OK, so I made this square, right? Uh, I think we all know how to make squares. Um, and what I do is I just press Shift on this little corner with the indirect selection tool. Um, so I click on that one. Um, and then I also click on the one that is the diagonal like other side of it um, and then you can just drag these together and it makes that shape so you already have this like leaf like shape um, you can also uh, maybe make it like a little bit more unique 
Um, so you can make it like wider like that. Um, these are things where <laughs> when I was starting out, like you had to do basically like you had to trace them by hand. Um, and so <laughs> I was just like, thinking that. <laughs> yeah, like um, now that these things, um, the anchor points uh, have come mm. into play, it's like really changed what I can do for like illustration or making patterns. Like it's been really awesome. Nice, nice. And um, I mean, that's a good time to actually mention. I mean, there is a lot of... Um, tools especially on you know with the updates on on adobe creative cloud um and definitely make use of that because there's a lot of things that just makes it so much easier for you guys to design um and even quite nice is that you have that feature where you can hover over um certain tools and it has like a little pop-up video which kind of shows you as well tutorials so um definitely sort of you know keep up to date and, and also just have fun with it practice mm -hmm. um you know keep up to date with some creative challenges we have at adobe live and, uh, and really test those skills because it's um it's a fun thing to sort of get into right whilst you're in the in the flow of designing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start uh, doing vectors of these. So, nice. okay, let's see. Um, so like this one, for instance, it's, I know it's like so sketchy, but like- um, I like that though, Dave. I like that a lot. <laughs> that stood out for me, that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's letter O and then it also has this leaf shape in it. So uh, we've already created that leaf shape down here. Um, so we can use this. We've got Becca who says she's already digging the top left one. I think that was on your thing, on your- This one? Uh, sort of bottom. I think it was the, if I could correct and say this, the bottom uh, row um, on your uh, artboard, the board before. I think. Oh, this one. I think so, top left one. Is that, I hope that's right, Becca. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, let us know guys what, what one you're kind of digging and, and vibes and um, yeah. Okay, right. we're gonna uh, also make something with this <laughs> nice. because because she said that the people's um, demand. I love that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give the people what they want. Exactly. Um, okay, so uh, another like tip about uh, after you've done this, um, so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go um, into object um, path and then add anchor points. So that way, when you scale it, um, nothing crazy happens. Um, like if you, if you don't do this, uh, it might, um, uh, not like come out with as the, uh, scaled shape that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something that, um, just to like, keep in mind. So I have this shape. I'm actually going to go like this so that it's straight. And I'm going to make these like grooves that this, um, mm -hmm. this leaf has. I like it. It has that sort of hand-drawn feel that like for me, I don't know, I'm a bit, um, what's what I'm looking for? I, I like where it's not too neat, if you know what I mean, not too yeah. polished. Um, I think that's quite a nice, nice style. Um, especially if it's if it's something that maybe is related to nature, where it doesn't feel like it should be too, it kind of just flows the way it should, right? Um, yeah, tell how you will, but I, I feel like that that's, there's, there's a lot in that design, which I think would be quite nice. Um, with a nice color palette too. Uh, we got it right, Becca, that was the correct one, Becca said. the. Uh, that top left hand corner. Phew, I was worried for a second. Right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Keep those questions coming, guys. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I don't want to have to deal with like any of these vectors like getting in the way, getting in the way of my designs. <laughs> so um, I am going to, I'm using this uh, tool called Shape Builder. And what I do is I hold down Option and I just drag the parts that I don't want and then they're gone. So nice. um, that's like another tool that I use all the time. And um, like, it wasn't around when I was in school. So uh, <laughs> Before I, it was I, cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I, like I hope everyone like um, can benefit from this. Definitely, keep, keep those gems coming, Kevin. I feel like I said anything, again, it's for those, especially if you're quite new to design, it's these little tips and tricks that, um, you know, if you're just tuning in, it's it's great to know, especially if you're just starting out, because it's quite fun to to learn these new tools. So now I have this circle, and I'm just going to make the stroke a little bit bigger. And what I think is, like, cool about the O, especially, is that um, how it's, like, thin here, and then it gets um, thicker on these sides. Mm. Um, so that's something I definitely want to play around with. 
and make um, with this logo. So um, I'm going to use the width tool. Um, and so you just like select it here. I think it's also um, shift W is like the command. Um, but you just, it has to be on a shape that has a stroke. That's important. Um, but you can just uh, grab any part of the shape and you can resize the area that you want. So I can make this like thinner. And so it already has like that cool nice. shifting shape. Mm. I'm totally getting as well, like almost like you can imagine these designs being, especially the one you're working on now, um, screen printed. Especially if it's oh, like yeah. tote bags or, or even aprons actually for some of the staff in the coffee shop. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'm a sucker for screen printing, but but yeah, it's um, there's a lot of cool shapes that could be had there. So uh, I'm gonna put this in here. And we can see in the chat, we've got, um, everyone's kind of loving your designs, dude. Um, Great. Got, uh, <laughs> Ramu just said, I like the sun sketch um, as well. So uh, yeah, keep those chats coming on. And there's comments, of course, as well. Awesome. Okay, um, so uh, that's like one. And what I would do is I would probably just put this on like another page so it's clean and I can compare it. Um, mm. And then I would just like start a new one. I think I'm, so, I'm definitely guilty of doing like new artboards. I mean, oh, just, just, <laughs> actually, I don't know what else that sort of habit, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't set this file up for that, but what I usually do is I have them all in a square and then I just like keep making nice. the new artboards. That's so strategic. I love the way <laughs> of thinking that's, that's a very smart, yeah, much effective Because way then, it, then it's already ready for Instagram if you think about it. I uh, was thinking social. I like your vibe, dude. I like <laughs> very good shout. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, this sun one that we have here um, because there's another tool that I want to play around with for that. So, all right, let's say we use this um, circle that we've already created. What we can do uh, is we can use a leaf shape. So let's say we use this one um, and we'll put it over here. And uh, instead of me making like 20 of these and rotating them ever so slightly around uh, this circle, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to object. Um, I'll do repeat radial and it's going to make its own shape <laughs> uh, uh, where uh, it's kind of like they're all going around this circle in that like sun formation. Nice. So it's like we have leaves, but they're also coming together um, around mm. the circle to kind of go with that idea of community. There's something quite satisfying as well when you when you're just going through this sort of. Um different steps there and then you kind of do that final one and then it kind of pops out how it's supposed to be the pathfinder tool or, or tools like this it's something quite satisfying when you yeah <laughs> you create a new graphic um that's why for me illustrator is always quite a fun one to to play in yeah i actually um so i used to do this there was like a like almost like a, a math formula that you would do to do this um but i think that they came out with this tool um either last year or the year before and I was like, whoa, like I could make anything with <laughs> My this. mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, it really uh, changed the game uh, for uh, <laughs> doing this type of thing. Because before it was like you would uh, basically like put it into like you you would there would be a window and you would put in numbers and then you would like like yes, fingers I'm... crossed hoped <laughs> <laughs> that it would it would come out the way that you wanted. And now it's just all live. Like it's amazing. Yeah, that's um, what we do at Adobe Live. I keep yeah. we're dropping those gems for you guys, so you, it makes it so much easier for you guys just to create, do what you guys do best, right? Design and have fun with it. So uh, yeah, just keep always keep up with those updates as well, because like we said there's always things coming out just to make it easier for you. So, uh, yeah, and these are things that I learned um, when I was freelancing too. They're just like shortcuts and like uh, different ways to do things. So like um, you're always learning, you know. <laughs> So um, there's one that's kind of like a sun and, and you can uh, 
I'll probably just center this. Actually, it wasn't that centered, but. And whilst, whilst you're doing it, I'm quite curious about, um, I've got a few questions here to sort of feed into um, whilst you're designing, but for your inspiration, where do you kind of tend to, um, you know, a project like this, for example, you, you mentioned obviously you visit this coffee shop itself. Did you maybe go around to others in the area or been online or um, magazines that you may have read? Is, where do you kind of tend to, uh, what's your starting block or does it kind of vary per project? Yeah, um, sometimes it varies. Like for instance, um, I did a package design for a tequila company that was here in Dallas. And so what I did was I wanted to go to um, like liquor stores and also bars to see what it would look like um, if that package was like next to a whole bunch of other packages. Like how would it just, uh, how would it stand out? Or like, let's say you are at a bar and then you're like kind of far away from where the bartender is. Um, you want to like be able to see like uh, you want to have that like brand recognition where you can see from across the room oh oh there that that's like the tequila that i like mm. um so yeah that was just like um something that i uh typically do um for package design or um also like branding in general mm. um there are other times where clients, um, like let's say uh, one of them that I had was this um, indoor climbing company. And they were like, um, like we wanna have like a meeting with you and everything, but we also want you to experience the product. So um, I also like did some research <laughs> by doing some indoor climbing as well. Awesome. Dude, I love how your your client um, list it, it definitely varies from um, which is quite nice. It kind of keeps things up, you know it, more interesting as well, right? And definitely afloat um, when your when your sort of client list can can vary, um, especially if it's projects that you feel like you can really relate to as well, right? If you're interested in it, then it, it just it almost comes from the heart in a way, but also mm -hmm. you, you you know you're really intrigued intrigued in it. So um, that's really cool to kind of know the the variance of uh, clients they have, and obviously where the inspiration comes from. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to work on this one next. Actually, um, I'll, I'll work on this one. Uh, you're going to need a favorite one. Nice. There we go, Becca, just for you. Yeah. And of course, for everyone else. Be this, yeah. this one's for you, Becca. <laughs> just obviously, just a quick one whilst you're doing that. I mean, again, we just touched on inspiration. You know, for you guys in the chat, where do you tend to you know, find your inspiration? Are you. Are you one to go online, going on Behance, obviously a daily live, watching some of our tutorials? Would you kind of go into the into community? What's your, what's your thing? Magazines? Um, definitely share those experiences in the chat and um, we would love to hear them. I mean, of course, I'll be sharing those with, uh, with Kevin and we can discuss it too. So yeah, I actually am really liking the way that this one is coming together. Um, with these leaves that are kind of like growing out of a center point, like maybe there mm. could be an, an O or like a coffee bean in the middle. I uh, actually start with like... That's the kind of radius part of it, I mean, yeah. We've got a, um, so Denzel, um, he's loving it first, first of all, your designs. Um, he said, wow, this is amazing. Um, but he asked, could you repeat the shortcut again? Um, he'd like to save it. Denzel, would you let us know which part um, you meant in there? And um, hopefully we can definitely do like a nice little repeat as well. Um, oh yeah so uh yeah that'd be great to see for sure definitely let us know denzel in, in the chat what you what you meant which part so i like this and i think that this one kind of relates to this idea that i had over here where it's just like these leaves so i'm gonna also try that Becca's liking the idea that you've um, oh, good. We've, used a, we've, we've got the emoji with the stars in the eyes. So um, yeah, that's going down a treat. So there we go. I kind of like wonder what it would look like if it, if this logo was, or this leaf wasn't here, where it's kind of like these branches. <clears throat> mm. And it's interesting as well. I know it's the it's the very early part, of course, of of, of the logo brand design. Um, but obviously, working in black and white is it's always interesting. Do you ever find with clients as well? Sometimes you have to kind of walk them through that step where it needs to work in black and white first before it can be in 
you know, the chair and the cake, are you the color aspects of it as well. Um, I always find that, you know, if, if it can work in black and white, then the color kind of complements it. Um, but sometimes clients, they really want to go straight all in and just, I want to see it in purple. I want to see it in yellow and green. Um, well, yeah. um, what I typically do is I feel like my presentation is like probably the biggest part of um, overall design. Like I want to kind of walk through the brand with them almost like a story. Mm. Um, and I have a build up to this presentation that's like um, talking through the inspiration, um, and I always show the logo first in black and white so they can kind of like um, marinate on, on a little bit uh, nice. before uh, I show them the logo in color because I just want them to kind of like mm. understand that there's going to be times where you are actually going to use this black and white logo like uh, or like in uh, all, all white. So um, I just want them to like really think about that whenever I show a presentation. I don't know if you, you don't burst that bubble when they're when they're really keen on it being in gold and this is like why is it, really, <laughs> why is it on black and white um ah so denzel's came back with that shortcut he mentioned it's when the leaf ah it's when the leaves were going round in a circle to create that rays of sun oh yeah okay uh, I'll, yeah. I'll do a brand new one nice. um how about we do one with these coffee beans so um what you do is uh, I actually don't have a shortcut for you, <laughs> but I, I, will, I will show you how to do it. Um, so you take the object, you go to object, repeat, and then you select radial, and then it does all the work for you. So you can just like adjust it however you need. Hmm. Um, you can rotate it. So it's like a really useful tool, especially when you want to make um, a very distinct mark. And I feel like this is something that um, like no matter who you are, uh, this uh, style really, it just like naturally brings you in because it's almost like <laughs> it's like an explosion almost or like a, it's, it's like a star. It, it has perfect symmetry. Like it, it really just like draws your eye. Definitely. Nice. Hopefully that um, that answers your question, Denzel. But um, that's, that's great to again. It's it's these kind of um, moments where if you're quite new to, so you're seeing Kevin create some awesome magic, or you want him to repeat anything, definitely you know put those in the chat, and, and we're happy to uh, to do that for you. Because again, it's good for you guys to learn, to be inspired, and obviously to create create your own um, designs too. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just move forward, um, with one of these that I think, um, is working, uh, cause I also want us to, um, talk about, uh, typography as well. Um, so, uh, I'm really liking this option. Um, and so I'm going to just like star this for now, and then, uh, I'm going to, bring it down to my type section to kind of just like play around with it. Um, do you know what we, we may... could do? I'm just uh, just throwing this out there as a, as a crazy option. We could do a little poll. So ten, we tend oh, to yeah, do yeah. little polls as well. <laughs> um, just the plot thickens, right? Um, and then maybe we could do like a little a little cheeky poll. I don't know what you, what you guys think in the chat. Um, and maybe I think you've got, obviously you've got uh, five options there. Uh, maybe we could do like one to five, what everyone else is thinking vibes um and of course you can you, know, you pick your, your favorite and you work with it um but it'd be great to know what everyone else is uh thinking so should we do yeah left to right one to five yeah we'll I'll, we'll do left left to right i'll um arrange these a little bit better i said left to right as if middle to out was an option as well <laughs> of course there's left, what other options are uh so yeah what are you guys thinking so maybe we could do a nice little poll in the chat and then um if you zoom a bit more as well that way we can all kind of marvel at your visuals and we can see um and it's always nice to know what, what what the vibes everyone's thinking. So uh, there we go. All right, everyone, um, don't pick the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No, no pressure. Um, so yeah, we'll hopefully do a little poll in there. What's everyone's thinking? So one to one to five, uh, one being the far left, obviously five being the far right. Um, and let us know what your thoughts are. Um, and what I'll do is I'll feed that results back to you, Kevin, whilst we're in the flow of it. But um, if you pick which one you want to work with now and then Let's see what everyone says a bit later. Oh, you want me to pick one now? 
Yeah, because I think we need a few a few minutes for okay. everyone else. Everyone else. <laughs> That's too much pressure. I or think. actually, <laughs> maybe I should just like work on one over here. Um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so should I like keep showing this screen? Or uh, I think I think we, I think we might have seen that. I think we'd be very. Um, oh, okay. Everyone's got a picture, hopefully picture memory of it all. But if you want a nice little reminder, let us know in the chat. Uh, my personal favorite. I mean, I'm vibing towards. I like number. Two, I like number one and two. I think number one actually for me. Number one was from the very beginning, um, just because got that kind of hand drawn feel. But don't let me influence your decision, guys in the chat. You let us know what you think. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump back to your uh, other board. Okay, I'm gonna um, play around with this one for a little bit while you guys decide. Quite exciting now. It feels like the Oscars nominees. I like, he's gonna <laughs> I mean, like a little drum roll, I think. <laughs> Where are you gonna go, man? Ah, so we've got a question here actually from Miranda. Um, I think she mentioned before actually, but sorry if I missed your your comment. Um so she mentioned, I'm generally curious why the leaves aren't from an oak tree. I'm sure there is a reason for style, space, etc. but please let me know because I am learning. Sure, um, that's a really good question. So I was, um, for this, I was just like kind of starting off as like, um, what does everyone think of when they think of a leaf? Like, um, I think the uh, oak tree is like, they have a very distinct style of leaves, but sometimes like, um, like that can kind of come off as like, like a blob or something mm. like that. Um, so I just wanted to play around with uh, something that everyone can kind of associate with as um, being natural and organic. It's almost like universal in a way where you just mm -hmm. you just know that that's. No, I get that. I get that. I mean, that's a great question as well, Miranda. Because yeah, then, I mean that could definitely feed into you know that real technicalities of. I mean, just putting it out there, even if it was for a brand for say um, a nature reserve or something like that, where you're looking at particular species or, or types of um, plants where you may actually use that particular shape just because those in the community know what that shape is. But if it's for maybe for the mass, using something, you know, generic or, or, or more universal to say, like the iconic leaf um, works just as well. So um, yeah, great question, Miranda. Um, hopefully that kind of answers your, your question, but uh, definitely keep those coming because that was a good one. Yeah, and who know, knows, like um, we're just working on the logo portion right now, but like um, maybe there's like a really interesting pattern or something that could incorporate um, that style of leaf as well. Like uh, it's honestly like just <laughs> too early to tell. Uh, so yeah. And uh, I mean, it's a good time to sort of give everyone a nice little reminder now, because we're about an hour into the stream, which I mean, time has kind of flown by, but if you have just joined us, um, a massive, massive welcome. Uh, and today we have uh, Kevin Kraft, who's a brand designer, um, and he's sharing his packaging design process with us. Um, and we are in the flow right now, Illustrator created a few icons uh, based on his creative brief. So um, if you've just tuned in, massive, massive welcome and uh, get those questions in the chat and I will share them directly with Kevin. So uh, massive, massive welcome. So um, just let me know like <laughs> when uh, the poll is up um, and I'll just like keep designing for now. I think we're still waiting. Um, I mean, maybe if we could maybe voodoo, if we about out, if we can do like a little poll of one to five. Uh, should we do like a little reminder again? Maybe for those who have just tuned in. And yeah, of course. Kind of thought, it's a poll, I want to participate, but I don't know what the options <laughs> are. We can, uh, we can, and you've added another one actually, the plot oh, yeah. now. So you, you, you swayed in your own design there. We didn't even see that. You just snuck that one in there. Um, uh, All right, we've got now, Elis Alessandra it, it, who... Oh, sorry, go for it. It's one through six now, so... Uh, one to six. There we go. Um, and Alessandra said it's so hard to pick because uh, she's liking all the designs, but hers is first and second as well. There we go. I think I might have influenced her. Hopefully I didn't influence <laughs> your decision. Um, what, what's your favourite, Kevin? What's your vibe? I'm going more towards these two in the middle, like, and what I am really responding to is like, it feels natural. There's like a sense of community here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like once I play around with the typography, um, there's going to be a way for me to make it feel like more approachable as well. 
nice i feel like as well when you've got elements like these kind of graphics you can um it's quite nice to kind of bring those graphics into the type like you said so mm -hmm. whether it's the shape of an o or even an a with the curve actually as well there's things you could actually do um which quite again it just kind of relates it all together um i mean so far i mean we'll put it out there one and two seems to be you may have to do the final jury, Kevin, and pick one out <laughs> too. But um, I feel like so far one and one and two. So uh, perhaps just go one and two, and um, we'll leave you to make that final call. Uh, no pressure, Kevin. No uh, pressure. Okay. <laughs> I what mean, is your vibe uh, telling you? <laughs> I think that um, it also has to do with um, like where we go with the typography as well. Um, so. I think we can pull like between the two of them. Um, I think I'm vibing more towards this one, um, but that may change. Uh, I uh, I think I would have to look at the typography first. That's okay. I mean, you you can make that executive decision. To, to <laughs> we will not judge you here. Um, and we've got Stony said. Um, then I like four if it's between uh, three and four. So there we go. So it, it is ranging right now. Um, and Denzel just said four as well. Um, there we go. It's, it's going to take a hard, hard brand designer to try and make this thing. But um, we, we <laughs> well, trust in your judgment. Okay. I, I mean, what we can do is um, we can bring these three, since they all conceptually are very similar, um, and see which one uh, works best once we start playing around with typography. Nice. Um, yeah, let's definitely get into that type because that would be quite a nice little um, segment. Yeah. Into, isn't it? And I want to spend a lot of time on this. So, um, here are some fonts that I've um, gone ahead and pulled. Um, I am really into buying fonts. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, uh, I buy them from all over the place. Um, a good place to buy them is uh, Envato. Um, they have a lot of good ones. Um, and then a lot of these I've gotten from a website called Font Bundle. That's why I put it down here, just so I wouldn't forget. Um, but it's called the Modern Serif Collection. And I use these a lot. Like I found a lot of uh, benefit to having this collection. So I just wanted to like nice. share it, <laughs> share it with the group. Uh, this isn't an ad. I don't like work for them or anything. Uh, <laughs> It's a nice little plug. And I mean, I mean, it'd be criminal on mine, so definitely not mention as well. Of course, Adobe Fonts as well has a strong, strong collection. Um, and that's not me just plugging it. Maybe I am a bit. But also, there is a very, very good, um, strong collection in there. So um, we, I feel like yeah. as designers, we've all got our own little bookmarks place in our brains where we like to kind of go to for fonts. Um, but yeah, Adobe Font is always a, is always a nice one to keep um, saved as well. Yeah, I use a lot of fonts on um, Adobe Typekit as well. In fact, my favorite font is called um, Sophia, and I believe that one is um, Adobe Typekit. Nice. Um, but these are fonts that I've um, gone ahead and picked out and started playing around with uh, what the logo type could look like. Um, I chose fonts that I felt like had character to them um, and also had elements of their um, their type forms that are more organic than something than say like a sans serif. Mm. Um, so these are some of the ones that I've um, been playing around with. Mm. Um, I would I say- the, I love the kerning on the K. They're, they're, they're the K. There's a few of them there that's Really, really cool. Um, I mean, that top left one, my brain is already thinking that, you can imagine that K where you've got the um, sort of cutoff point on the top right. That could easily be a shape, right? A graphic of the um, of the leaf. Um, yeah. But there's, yeah, there's a lot there to add. Another reason why um, some of these fonts I've chosen is because um, they have uh, leaf-like shapes in them already. So like, for instance, um, this O here has that like perfect leaf shape um, and it has it in some of the bowls of like the E and the A. Nice. Um, <clears throat> this one also has like that organic leaf shape here. Um, mm -hmm. So these are kind of like the ones that uh, I thought could be uh, interesting. Like they seem kind of creative too, uh, mm. which might serve um, that demographic as well Is like, um, these are people that um, they go to the coffee shop to work because they don't necessarily work like, um, like a regular nine to five job. Like they're kind of like on their own schedule. Mm. Um, so yeah, these are some fonts that um, 
I can play around with. Um, I'm just going to extend this artboard. Yeah. Almost feel like a kid in a candy store where you've got these many <laughs> options of, um, of amazing fonts. And we've got a really yeah. good question, actually, still related on, on that topic of, of the fonts. Um, it's a great one from Becca, who said, if you buy a font for a brand design, does the client also need to buy it? Or how does that work? So that's a, that's a very good question, actually. That is a really good question. Um, so I would say a lot of the fonts that I buy, they come with a license. And um, if it's a commercial license, you're able to use them for commercial products, for instance, um, selling a logo. Um, so that's typically uh, what I go by. Um, I also do a lot of customization to these typefaces so that they're not just kind of like out of the box. They're just like um, a, like a mixture of different things or like, like maybe I'll like do some kerning and like um, some extension of some of the letter forms. So it's not necessarily like um, the exact font um, mm. that it originally was. Nice. And we've actually got a, a lovely one. It kind of leads on actually from what uh, what Becca was saying from Denzel. Uh, he said, just to add on to what Becca said previously, um, can I use free font? Can I use a free font to create a logo? Is it legal? Um, to answer your question, I, th I feel like uh, that, range, it, it? <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on what the license is. Yeah. Um, so your font should um, have a, a space either on the website that you downloaded from or um, when you download it, it's usually in the file. Uh, there will be like um, a file that has the license in it um, mm -hmm. and, and that will tell you. They usually spell out what you can do with the, uh, the typeface in that license as well to kind of like make it easy. Mm. Um, so I would just recommend um, you look out for that uh, when you're looking for a font. Very good point. I mean, just to echo what you said, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's looking out for those almost like T's and C's, but the, because also as well, someone spent time, especially if it's maybe um, on Behance as well, you can download fonts from mm. other creators in the community. Um, and obviously when a typographer or someone's made, you know, spent a lot of time creating these fonts, um, you want to make sure obviously you're giving them, um, you know, the credit they deserve, whether that's the, you know, um, to mention what they've done or of course to, to compensate and, and to pay for it. But um, it's definitely worth always when you buy a font, if you're not too sure, it's worth looking just to make sure. And even if you are so just to cover all corners, because um, the last thing you want is down the line, there's a bit of trouble. Um, with a client so um so yeah great great question um keep those coming guys um another thing that you can think about when you're thinking about um creating your logo type is to think about the case that you use um for instance like something that's all caps um often comes off as like sophisticated or serious so for instance like um, like this one being all caps or like uh, this one, it might feel like less approachable than something that is um, lowercase or like title case mm -hmm. um, because it almost goes into like language and like how you speak or like read things. Yeah. Um, so that's like something to think about. Very good point. Um, what I like about this font in particular is I like that it has this like leaf shape here and it has these like organic grooves here as well in the R and the T. Mm. Um, so I think I'm going to start playing around uh, with this one. That's a, that's a good uh, one. To, that's a nice starting block that one. That's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's definitely one of my favorites as well. It's a nice one. And then, but I also really like this O. <laughs> so um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just like copying this one into this one, seeing if it fits. It up. Um, and it's like obviously too small. Um, but uh, what you can do is use the touch type tool. And you can, um, and if, if you didn't see that, it's um, it's over here in the type um, section. You just hold down on it, or you can do um, Shift T, and you can grab um, the character. Like you can grab any of these characters, and some of them even have um, glyphs too. So like this one, you can change out the A to mm. that one. 
I do love going into that glyph section as well. Yeah. You, <laughs> the, 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 that in itself is a whole world, right? Of what you can um, of what you can achieve with the different fonts that you do. Yeah, that's um, usually like my reason. Like it, when I'm looking at when I'm font shopping, I'm like, does it have glyphs? <laughs> I love that <laughs> font shopping. Just like <laughs> the bags around, just yeah, yeah. sunglasses on. I'm going font shopping. Yeah, no, totally. I totally relate. And I like as well how you it's it's the uppercase as well. It's the um, uppercase O, uppercase S. It, even though it's con- c- completely connected on one line it's that it feels like a breaking point with the capital s mm-hmm. um so as well i mean i know you've got different variants of, of how that works um but i like it where it's like that i think that works quite well um so what i'm going to do is now that you're in this type tool um box what you can do is you can just resize things however you'd like um so i'm going to try and get this to where uh it's the same height as a t I use my rulers for this. And whilst whilst you're doing that, it's quite a nice time to mention, you know, again, get those questions in the chat for sure. But if you're on um if you're on YouTube, um definitely don't forget to subscribe because you know hopefully you're enjoying the stream and it's we have many, many streams that are, you know, just like this where you can, you know, be inspired, you can learn a lot as well. Um so your brain will not uh be disappointed if you subscribe and obviously you can get that kind of you know daily creative content coming in your way. Um, so again, if you're choosing, if you're tuning in via YouTube or Behance, massive, massive welcome. Um, and please do get those, uh, questions in the chat whilst we're designing. Um, okay. So, uh, I have a question for you. Um, <laughs> do you like this K or do you like this K? Oh, you've asked a person whose name begins with K as well. That's, that's the, plot <laughs> yeah. even, the plot even thickens more. We both begin with K to be fair. Um, I want to be extra. Can you copy, like, duplicate, and then oh, have, yeah. so so we can see. My brain has to see two things side by side. <laughs> I've made it even more complicated now. Um, which K do we prefer? Hold on. Uh, all right. Oh. Okay. On straight away, my brain went with the below one. Mainly this because one. I think, yeah, I think mainly because the way the the K, um, how the way it ends and it kind of still follows mm-hmm. on from the S, my brain, yeah, it, it couldn't. There was something troubling it. I don't know what the actual words are, but something troubling at the first one at the top where it kind of cuts in quite abruptly at the bottom of the S. Yeah, um, both. I mean, both look cool to me, but but yeah, I think I'm drawn to the bottom K. How about you? Yeah, name? actually, so the reason that I asked was um, I was drawn to this shape, uh, but <laughs> um, I, I think what you're saying is right, uh, how uh, the baseline is kind of like uh, nice and streamlined here, and there's kind of like some weird negative space going on in this this yeah. area. It doesn't necessarily like read um, as clean as this one, mm. and that's something that I look for when I'm um, choosing uh, a logo type. Um, what I am gonna do next is this K is kind of like running right into this S, um, and I'm going to do like some light kerning um, just to make sure that uh, that isn't an issue. So that looks We've pretty got good. A, um... So just to feed on that as well, we've got on that topic of the K, um, really great question or oh, um, recommendation from Erin, who said if the swash of the K could link to the S maybe. Um, yeah, that's a nice point. I think we kind of touched on the, the bottom part, obviously the K, right, linking up. But I don't know if you mean the, the top part as well, um, where it spins in. But um, yeah, I think a nice connection between how the K and the S sit. That seems to be going down quite well um, with the chat. So great. Actually, I uh, just had an idea, and let me see if it'll uh, if it'll work. But I, I think maybe this is what he means. Um, so I've outlined this, and um, because this corner is like um, has an angle to it, what I can do is I could um, use the anchor points again, mm. um, and so I can make it like more curved um, while still keeping that like streamlined baseline nice um, i feel like that's what it is i mean, I mean we've got quite a few um and actually even val said a, a quite a nice one as well i wonder if we can make the uh, i'm just throwing loads of suggestions you know and by all means you can digest them as you, <laughs> as you see fit 
Um, so Val said, I wonder if we can make the point of the K and the S stroke connect at a nice point. I feel like that's kind of what we were doing a little bit, wasn't it? What you were, what you were showing. Um, that's actually a really good idea. Uh, and I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> but yeah. Val, Val, Val always throws in those gems. So that was a good one, Val. Keep, keep, those, keep those gems coming. Okay, um, I, I, I want to like preface though that uh, I'm not like the best <laughs> at this like uh merging uh letters together but i, I will you, try for you guys you've opened the floodgates now okay yeah. that's, that's what happened but in a nice way again we're all here to support so um and also it's quite nice just to kind of see where i mean it might work it might not but it's quite cool to yeah to we might as well try exactly Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I've counted like about six different variants now of the how the K and the S are coming out. That's the real um, talk of the town today. Uh, we've got Lara, said as well. Um, and again, you're in the flow of that, so by all means, please finish. Uh, but Lara said as well, you can make the end of the S go with the shape of the K just in that part. Um, okay, let me try that. <laughs> that sounds like a better idea. <laughs> And it's quite nice as well. I mean, all these suggestions are great because I think it's, it's, I mean, you touched on this before, Kevin, as well, where when you get a font, you don't just kind of unpack it and then that's it. Um, you kind of, you know, you, you work it together, you try and make it work, you manipulate it slightly as well. Um, you know, that's, I mean, that's for me as well. I try and do the same as well within my line of work, but I think that's quite nice where you, you try and make it your own um, mm -hmm. in that regards anyway, you know, that kind of unique style. Um, sometimes you get a font that's already perfect fits the brand, you know, amazingly well, but um, it's those distinctive ways you can kind of join things up or maybe, you know, manipulate the letter to make a graphic that kind of just makes it a bit more um, standalone, really, not standalone the right word, but more more engaging, visually engaging. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try on this for a little bit, but I don't want us to run out of time, so I might have to like go back. That's okay. I already told you, didn't I? The um the time in the Adobe Hemisphere, live hemisphere, it goes yeah, oh, it very, goes... very quick, doesn't it? So, yeah, um... I, I knew it would go by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm just you, like you take the lead, buddy. Uh, trying to smooth this out a little bit. The only thing that um and maybe like this isn't the actual suggestion, it's just like something I did. I feel like this is making weird negative space here. Mm. Um, and like, it's one of those things where I feel like it seems like it should go together, but, um, because the do. K is kind of like trapping this space, I'm not necessarily sure that it works, but I don't know, maybe someone else can do it better. <laughs> no, that's a good point. I mean, that, that was actually a few of the, um, uh, some of the comments, I think one from Stony as well about, you know, playing negative space and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's always a very interesting thing to kind of keep an eye out. Um, you know, cause usually as well, it's, it's by eye. It's, there's no definitive rule sometimes. It's, it's kind of, you know, you take a step back, you, you do a print and you kind of see and you think, okay, actually, yeah, that does look a bit strange. Um, you know, you can shove it pixel by pixel, but sometimes you have to just kind of, you know, go by the eye. Um, so yeah, no, great point. And um, by all means, Kevin, definitely go in the flow of it and um, into your next part. Okay, so um, we'll move forward with this one. And um, what I'll do is I'll make a board that has these different logo marks. Um, and one thing that I th thought could be kind of cool is if we uh, incorporate that O into one of these. So it kind of like has that connection there. Or maybe all of them. I think it could work for all of them. I think so. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of that because of the shape as well, what it is. You can kind of get away with any petal really being inside, right? And it will, it will pretty much more or less work. Um, and with the E as well. And with the A. <laughs> and even there's <laughs> a hole in it, really. I 
actually on that topic, whilst whilst you're you're doing that, Kevin, uh, I don't want to interrupt your your flow. Um, but it's quite curious. It's more my part, really. Is there a sort of particular brand or client? I mean, maybe it's a coffee brand, but one that almost like a dream client that you would like to, if you had a chance to rebrand. I mean, that's a really big question, I know, but uh, <laughs> it comes to mind straight away. It's like, what's the right color? <laughs> yeah, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's so funny because uh, this is a question that I like, I was like 99% sure that I was going to get. Ooh. Um, okay. but thinking about it just made me so stressed out that I just kept, <laughs> <laughs> I just kept putting I it off <laughs> and now I don't have an answer. Um, I, love that. <laughs> I feel like, uh, so since I started freelancing, I've mm. gotten to work on a lot of really cool brands, uh, that I've always wanted to work on. I mean, th like Adobe being one of them, but, um, I uh, I love working on projects that are like this though, where it's kind of like um, a brand that's like just getting their footing and mm -hmm. I can kind of like be there on the ground floor um, nice. um, to kind of like establish like what their brand identity is, like where they're gonna go. And mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know, that's like something that I really, uh, enjoy doing but I like I wouldn't say that I have like a dream client but I would say like this is the type of work that I uh I kind of like uh went off on my own to do yeah no I get that I get that I feel like there's some connection as well with even um startup brands or in its family business brands as well because you do find that there's a lot invested I don't just mean financially but even emotionally as well in a sense where if it's a family business um mm -hmm you know, sort of restaurant or, or anything of that nature, you know, it, it means a lot to them. And I think when you're able to kind of visually articulate what they're trying to achieve, it, it does feel good. I mean, any job you do and, you, you know, you do your best, but I feel like for me personally, anyway, working with like family owned businesses or, or startups, there is, um, there's an element of, of accomplishment when you get to sort of see it thriving and doing well and the business is doing well. And, you know, that that's kind of, you know, due to the fact as well with your branding that you've created. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a nice feeling, um, and actually, as what well, sorry, just a quick one. We had um, Trina who's just joined in, um, and actually, you might be thinking, what are we discussing right now? Um, if you just joined in, like Trina, uh, massive welcome first of all. Um, and right now, we are in the flow of a brand designer Kevin Craft, um, and he's creating a rebrand uh, for a local coffee shop uh, based in Dallas. And you can see us right now. We've kind of looked at a few um, icons, which he's done with drawings, and now we'll look at typography and trying to find a nice way to kind of blend blend the two together. Um, so yeah, massive welcome just joined and any questions you might have on that topic, uh, get that in there, please. Um, so now I've uh, I've matched some marks uh, with um, some logo types um, and I thought maybe we can like do a poll on, um, which ones like I, I know that there, this one was like the clear favorite at the beginning but like it which one change. do you think yeah it might change yeah. like yeah. uh now, now that we're in a different part of the design <laughs> definitely the, so, us, us adobe live folks we like to keep everyone on their tight in a good way of course so who knows that that might fluctuate the uh their favorite options <laughs> so should we do again from the top to bottom one to three maybe as a little yeah yeah if you can you zoom in a little bit more just so we can yeah we can take it well and again, uh, <laughs> it gets cut off kind of but um ah to a point there we go um so again in the chat what are you what are you guys vibing what are you feeling for style wise that work well so looking at the icon the visual and the type um we've got number one at the very very top number two in the middle and number three at the very bottom what is your vibe? And um, what I'll do is, well, I will definitely feed that into to Kevin. So in the meantime, I'll keep Kevin in suspense. But you definitely uh, in the chat, let us know what you're what you're feeling. Um, okay, so like, uh, well, that's uh, being pulled. Um, I think pending, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can start talking about color. I think. Um, so so far, just a quick one, just to drop it in there. Number one is kind of a lot, by the way. So I'm not saying that's a clear winner, but number one seems to be everyone's favorite at the moment. So okay, um, yeah. <laughs> we'll let it park for a second, but um, but yeah, <laughs> you jump on color if you like. Okay, I'll I'll jump I'll jump back as soon as like we get all the votes in. 
Nice. Um, so uh, we can just like start talking about color. And then once we have the logo chosen, we can um, talk about applying it to that. Um, what I usually do is I start with um, four colors. Um, I'll just like do a board like this and then I'll start playing around with um, those and then I'll kind of like grow um, the color scheme based off of that. Um, so I have some colors from the mood board, um, some pictures of oak trees, like the space um, and also um, the actual uh, package design. So uh, one of the things that like I think of when I think of coffee is that really rich, like dark brown color. Um, so that could be kind of like a starting off point is like, maybe we for sure want this color to um, be aligned with our brand. Mm. Um, and then another one that we can think about and like what I like to do is I like to grab photos for inspiration like here and then you can kind of just like eye drop them um and kind of play around with the different pixels um uh, and see like what really speaks to the brand mm. so like for instance i don't think that this space is necessarily like they have like super flashy neon colors. Like it's not like uh, like hot pink or something like that. No, not like, this guy. <laughs> yeah, they want something that's like um, very natural. Um, this setting, like to me, it has a lot of um, natural light. There's like um, there's like a lot of wood elements. Um, that brick is like uh, like a neutral color. So um, I wouldn't necessarily brand them as like um, something that is like. Uh, like a, a big pop of color or even like um i also wouldn't necessarily brand them as something that's like strictly black and white either mm. like they, they seem like um a place that uh kind of embraces these warm tones um and like a subdued color palette mm. so, i mean the vibe i get from i mean if i went to a coffee shop or any sort of you know a place where i can work especially that kind of color palette it just feels calm it just feels like you, mm -hmm. you want to yeah. be there it, it doesn't feel like you said if it was a pink neon or lime green i don't know if i should kind of buy a drink or if i should dance but i guess if, if, if <laughs> i did like this it feels you know you can relax you can you know be be at one really we can read you can design it's it just feels cozy in a way um cozy color palette there we go you can run with that one um and actually it reminds me of, again of the adobe color that's quite nice maybe do you ever use adobe color um so oh yeah, <laughs> actually, for I um I forgot that those are related, but um yeah, I use that <laughs> I use that a lot. Um, it's really great for looking for uh, color inspiration, but also like I love that it's really like a tool, so you can upload your own and like yeah. it kind of like auto creates things for you. Like it's it's really useful. It's super awesome. And again, if you're quite new to, to Adobe Color, definitely, definitely check that out. Um, I mean, for me, with my own line of work, it just makes it easier to, maybe if you're even stuck with a bit of creative block in terms of what colors would mirror up well, um, you know, contrast. But even what's even amazing about Adobe Color is that you can actually get the hex code. Um, mm, and you can yeah. actually get it and put it straight into your um, uh, window in your Illustrator or, or any Adobe Creative Cloud really uh, program. Um, it's all do a little cheeky screenshot, which I tend to do a lot of, um, but then you don't want a desktop full of screenshots. So type in the code, perhaps more streamlined. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. And I can see the wonderful Voodoo Val just put that in the uh, in the chat. So um, yeah, definitely get playing with that if you're creating a rebrand. Yeah, that's like super useful, especially when you're um, done with a brand and then you have to make the brand guidelines. <laughs> so you oh, want to yeah. grab you want to grab those hex codes like real quick um, <laughs> yeah. and just copy paste them in there. Get those CMYK and RGB breakdowns, get that all, <laughs> all written down. Exactly. So here I kind of have like the base of a color scheme. And what I do is I kind of like um, like these are all pulled directly from the photo, but like I kind of go in and like this one, um, I might like make it a little lighter and just like play around with mm. um, the different uh, hues. 
Another thing that I like to do is um, I like to give my clients um, a secondary color palette. Um, so uh, what I typically do is like sometimes it'll be like a 50% version of one of the colors nice. or like even like 20 to kind of give them like like this is like an off-white that they can use on their website and this can be a color that they use as like a CTA or something like that. I'm guessing we're not going to expect any hot neon pinks, right? Uh, it's going to be <laughs> an, <laughs> just a brass off piece, but um, no, I'm definitely a sucker of the, when you do like a nice lower opacity. Um, and actually it works quite well with, um, you know, if you're looking at the deliverable side of things, whether it's um, print or business cards, tote bags, you know, having um, a solid color and the opacity lowered is almost a nice way of overlapping as well. And that can work with text, you know, obviously black text will work or white text depending on the background color, but um, but also different tints can also work as well in a nice subtle way as well. Um, it depends on the, the tone of the brand, but um, but yeah, I'm definitely a sucker to uh, the opacity being lowered for sure. It's also like, what I like about it is um, you're not giving uh, your client like the whole crayon box. Like, um, <laughs> uh, Cause yeah. so that way there's like a little bit more control over like once they uh, take it off their hands, they're not gonna like use all the colors. Like they're gonna, um, <laughs> they're gonna be using um, a color scheme that's really in line with like who they are as a brand. Mm. It's like, how dare you mix the two colors together? I put it specifically in the brand <laughs> guidelines. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> That's why we, we, yeah, that's why we have our brain guidelines is to make things nice and uh, to the book, right? And number, I mean, first of going back to that option, um, number okay. one seems to be the clear, clear winner. Okay, so, perfect. Because uh, <laughs> that one was my favorite too. There we go. <laughs> Our audience were in sync with your brain, Kevin. That's why that's what yeah. we do. The, the more you do Adobe Live, the more we're in sync and become one community. Well, I was actually, I was giving them subliminal messages. So I, <laughs> Just flashes of Oak Street every now and again. Yeah, I, I was I was looking at that one, if you could tell. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the next step of what I would do is I like to show, um, so first, like when I show my clients, like I'll, I'll have a slide that has like just the one black and white logo on it, but I also show them a page that has like all the different versions of the logo. Mm -hmm. um, so like there'll be one that's like, actually I'm gonna outline this real quick, but one that's like, um, uh, like the full centered logo. Um, with the mark and everything, or like there'll be one where it's just like the logo type over here. Um, there could be one where it's um, mark only. And then, um, but you'll also need one, like if it's on a website, um, you'll need it for uh, a horizontal version as well. So they can kind of see the versatility of this logo. Mm. And, um, it's kind of like easier for them to see it being applied to other things. Like they're like, oh, like um, this could easily be the Instagram uh, profile or like the favicon. Um, nice. And then like, this could be like on a t-shirt or something like that. So it just helps the client understand um, that uh, there are like just many uses for this. No, I get that. I mean, there's nothing worse than you, you give the client the logo and they've, they've used the wrong one maybe for the profile pic of an Instagram. It's like the longer version. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's the things that we see as designers almost slightly soul destroying, isn't it? But uh, when you give them the option, it just allows them to kind of, you know, be 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 um, be smart with basically which, which one they choose and obviously for it to work in the space. Um, and actually just on that topic of, of working in space, um, we've, we've had... We've got a bit of a running joke here when we have one of our hosts, um, Haniki, who just joined. So massive welcome um, to also save our documents. Because that's oh, yeah. also quite, <laughs> you'd be surprised how we are all very <laughs> succumbing to the idea of with design, 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 and we forget to, to press save. So thanks for uh, getting that in the chat about. Um, and yes, definitely always save, guys. Safety first. Did he save that? Did he say that because I just saved? <laughs> no, no. I mean, by, I, right. I feel like we, we always tend to. Um, because it's so easy to, to do that. I mean, yeah, I'm guilty of it sometimes. When yeah. you're just in the flow of it, um, you're like, oh yeah, I, I don't want to not save and lose all my day's work. 
not cool. There have been so many times where if I had not like had that um, thing where it like backs it up automatically, like yes. I, I would be so dead. <laughs> And then if you're like me, I mean, I, I back up the backup. I'm that kind of guy. Where oh, it's yeah. like, if I, I'm on hard drive, yeah, Creative Cloud, you know, and all sorts. Just, but you never know, right? You never know. My computer implodes randomly. So then it leaves it safe, safe to the cloud. Um, so yeah, there we go. Always save, always save my friends. Um, and then I'm going to play around with also um, adding this in. So like, it'll say, um, They'll have like a little tag at the bottom that says coffee. Do they have like a tagline at all? Do you know the brand, the coffee? Um, and I said, I don't know, do coffees have taglines? I feel like maybe some may do. Um, like a nice catchy slogan, but um, if not, coffee. I feel like that'd be more maybe for like cover photos potentially, if they're doing like a banner. To oh Facebook yeah. Or, um, but yeah, I mean, is what it says on the tin. So obviously you need to have have it in there. But um have you got like a method as well with the secondary font that you use sometimes for Oh yeah. Um so I uh I was I forgot to talk about that, but um I like to use a mic like if I'm using um a font that's like very like a very heavy serif, I like to pair it with something that's really clean. Um, I usually use a sans serif. Um, this one that I'm using is called Sophia Pro. Um, that's what I was like saying earlier is like, that's my favorite font. <laughs> I love it. It's like, so, uh, it's so, it's so good to use with other things. And, um, usually if I'm doing like custom type, I'll usually start with Sophia cause I know it so well. And then like, nice. uh, I could do those, I could do those things to other fonts. Um, but this is kind of just like, I don't have a tag, um, but I mean, if there are any copywriters in the audience right now, I could write us a tag. There we go. <laughs> ten, 10 points if you can think of a creative, um, short but sweet tagline to go about. Oh yeah, please, yeah, please, there we go. please let it be short. <laughs> <laughs> just like four lines of copy, just Lauren Epson, Lauren Epson. <laughs> I hate I lo um, long tags. It's like so hard to work with. No one, no one wants a long tag on a long tag on a short logo. It's um, it's on it's on hurdle. Um, but I like as well how you spaced out the the, the kerning on it as well um, between the coffee, which is quite nice. I mean, that sort of font. It's is it Sophia? You said that's the name. Yeah, of the it's font? called Sophia Pro. It's an Adobe Typekit yeah. font. Yeah, that's a nice font. I like that one. Um, is that your favorite font? Would you say? We haven't even touched on what your favorite font is. I can't believe. Oh, Where it was that one. It's, it it's definitely okay. this one. <laughs> that is a favorite font. Nice. Um, I, I feel like it's just like very classic looking, but it's also not like, um, it's it's like uh, I could do so many things with it. Like it's it's almost like a blank slate, but not in like a boring way. I get that. I get that. We've got um, Val. He just put the link as well to Sophia. Font. You know what's going to happen now? You're going to have a whole sea of rebrands now based on your favorite font now, Kevin. You're going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you started a trend now of uh, Sophia rebrands, but uh, well, I mean, it's a okay. nice font. So, yeah. um, maybe they should hire me to be their spokesperson or something. <laughs> <laughs> any Sophia? Any Sophia? Yeah. Call outs in the chat. Yeah. Make yourself known. <laughs> make yourself known. Um, so I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play around with, um, color for the logo, just to make sure everything is working. Nice. Um, that's why I made, uh, all these different artboards is we're just going to play around with, um, different, uh, color schemes. Oh, and then one thing that you, um, need to do with, um, these radial logos is you're going to have to go to expand and um, just press OK um, because if you don't, you're not gonna you're you're not gonna be able to um, color them like just like this. You'll have to cl click in and then you'll have to color um, those particular mm. shapes. Um, so I'll do nice. that real quick. Nice little tip. And we've got a question from Erin. I hope I'm um, understanding this correctly. So you said, "What is the cliff in, in abbreviations notes of the brand Lux uh, luxury or community?" I'm guessing like the the overall like feel. Um, if, I'm, if I'm correct in saying that, um, and communities, that that's kind of going back to our brief, right, Kevin? The, the sort of keywords that that's the kind of essence that we want people to see and, and to feel when they see this this logo, um, that community feel. And um, were there all the other keywords you mentioned as well that you would like um, for, for the brand to community, community organic, uh, and approachable? Nice. 
I hope that's what you meant, Eric, when you said that, Cliff. If not, please, please correct me. Yeah, that. if not, just like, uh, let me know. But uh, I would say like the type of person that's going to this coffee shop is like um, someone that's like a creative um, that works remote or like um, someone that just like uh, is there like meeting a group of friends. Like it's like a very like friendly accepting space. Nice. Safe place for creative. I mean, I, I would love to, I mean, for me, I'm a sucker of going to a coffee shop, uh, especially if it's a new one actually, my laptop just for a change of scenery. So yeah. um, I definitely would visit Oak Street if it was in London, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I go to just like get out of my office sometimes. Um, I'm definitely used to, you know, like working alone. Um, but sometimes I just need to like, like, it's like I get like cabin fever and I need to just leave, but I also don't want to yeah. like, um, uh, like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't really have a co working space either. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I, um, I, I definitely have been told off by my wife for, for say, you know, if, if I mean, a week could go by as a freelancer working from home, and I have seen no, I mean, Zoom calls, I don't know if that counts <laughs> as seeing people interacting. It doesn't really count as, as seeing human beings, but um, it's it's healthy to kind of get out and and actually, if a client has approached, I I'm so down for a coffee catch up just to discuss things because yeah, especially if it's just <laughs> impossible. It's like people, yes, I get to see a human being again. Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, I, I'm the same yeah. exact way. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing that I kind of forgot to touch on um, is uh, I like to have the package like next to me when I'm designing. So I can kind of like cheat and uh, like copy it over and just like see like uh, if this is something that I think is working or not. Um, so let me try like this version where it's like screen printed. Nice. And we've got, um, we've got, uh, I hope I'm saying this correctly, your name, uh, Quaze, who said, or Quaze, I should say, uh, this logo is looking awesome. So the vibes are coming in well, man. Kevin, everyone's digging. Okay. Your, digging your designs. <laughs> uh, I, I'm really glad that you like it. Um, so, all right, let me ask you a question. Um, and I'm asking you this because I, 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 I'm working on another package design for another client um, that's more like uh, bottled water. Okay. And like, um, do you, are you more like uh, for something that you're going to drink, like a beverage, mm -hmm. um, do you want to see the product, like what you're drinking? Or are you more like, I want uh, like a label mm. um, or like a, like a really cool package or something. Like, uh, what's your preference? That's a, good, that's a very good question. My brain's thinking when I'm walking through the supermarket, what, I mean, I kind of go with what I know, but it's a tricky one, isn't it? My brain tells me I kind of want to see what I'm, if, if it's a new brand, especially if it's mm -hmm. a brand new one, what I don't really know. I mean, you could put on it pineapple, so I assume it's going to be a yellow or greeny kind of color, but potentially you may want to see. I don't know, actually. I, Beat around a bush here, but if there's a way of being both, I'm gonna be cheeky now. So can, <laughs> yeah, can we give you like a slightly transparent <laughs> opacity lowered back, back of branding around the edge? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, I, oh sorry, go for it. it, it it's a tough one for sure, mm. um, especially since we're uh, graphic designers. So we are like, um, I love packaging, but like for me, sometimes I like things that are a little bit more minimal. Um, like I, I like have a strong appreciation for that, so mm. it kind of depends. Um, that's a good question. I mean, definitely put that for the for the chat. I mean, that's if you guys are in a supermarket, do you is your brain saying that you need to kind of look at the just the branding first of all, or actually do you need to kind of almost see the product before you kind of get a feel for the brand? Um, you know, get your get your thoughts in there. Um, that's a great great question. Um, and just on that, I'd say we've got about. I mean, time is ridiculously flown by. We'll probably about another 10 more minutes or so okay. left um, and then we'll do like a nice little um, nice little recap but um you've got a solid 10 minutes so so no pressure Kevin it's all good okay great <laughs> um I thought I think like maybe what we can do is um so this uh first um two hours is more about uh creating the logo and then the next time is going to be more about um, the actual like getting into the package design um mm. so maybe like <laughs> just like looking at this now we can do a poll and decide like 
label or screen print? Like, uh, which which does the public prefer? I guess in a way it could be cheeky because the one on the right, you could also, you can always turn it right and still see what's inside. So yeah. it's almost like if, if it's a wraparound label, I guess the plot thickens, right? Because then you don't see as much of the product. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, left or right, there we go. What's what's your vibe on, um, can you zoom in a little bit more as well? Just so we can, of course. We can marvel and, and, and see. Um, and I guess you've got a nice um, comment actually from Abigail, which I'll say in a minute, but yeah, definitely. What's your vibe? Are you thinking left where it's just like a nice screen printed bottle or right hand side where, yeah, there's a bit more of a, a backing behind it. Um, Abigail said, I'd rather see a visual conception representation of what will be in the drink or food. Um, very interesting point, actually. That's another way of, of seeing it. Um, and actually, my brain was just thinking, that's a great point when you mentioned food and drink, because do you find, Kevin, like how your brain would operate? Maybe you might want to see food more than the drink. So if it's a liquid, I mean, maybe people's brains work differently, but are you more inclined to want to see maybe if it was a food, for example, like a, I don't know, a fast food joint, would you want to mm -hmm. see, and it came to you as a delivery, would you want to see what it is before you've purchased it? Oh, sorry, in a supermarket to say, um, in opposed to a drink? I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I think for me, uh, and I think that the reason that um, fast food does this a lot is because uh, they're trying to like hide that the food actually looks bad. <laughs> there we uh, go. Don't, I, maybe they don't yeah. name drop any brands there. I'm not going to name drop any brands. But like... Uh, I'm thinking it though. <laughs> and like, let's be honest. I like, I love fast food too. Like, uh, it, I'm not like, uh, like bashing fast food, but like, if you think about it, uh, like if we're being honest, it never looks like the photo. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, yeah, it, it never looks like the photo. So that's why they always have these like really intricate, like uh, like wrappers and package design, I, I feel like. Like if you think about, uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> not, not, not gonna say any names. I, I can see it on the top of your tongue there, couldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean like popular food brands, right? Where yeah. they have a certain look and feel, right? That you just think, yeah. And it's like a gra it's a graphic designer's dream too, because uh, you're getting to design all of these things and they're working together as a system. Mm -hmm. But I would say for me, when it comes to things that I drink, especially, um, I want to know what it looks like because I want to know, especially if it's something that's like, uh, like obviously this is coffee, but think about like uh, the other day, um, I I have oat milk in my fridge. And um, I opened it up, it didn't smell great. And so I just like dumped it out. And when I dumped it out, it was like kind of nasty. <laughs> so like, I want to know like what it looks uh, like in there if I'm going to be drinking it. <laughs> that's a very good point. Um, yeah. And actually we've got, um, which I can see why uh, Stoney said this, um, is this coffee flavored whiskey, um, which <laughs> <laughs> the bottle shape would suggest that, right? Um, just don't have it before you start your day at work. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's what can happen. Um, um yeah <laughs> just make sure that uh <laughs> you're not drinking this out of like a brown paper bag or something there we go you will you will get the looks um, and left the left one she seems to be um the majority of people's favorites actually so which i think that makes more sense as well right seeing mm -hmm. seeing the package nicely screen printed um we had a comment on there from from aaron actually who said um definitely loving screen printing if there was zero budget if we have zero budget restraints um, cause yeah, sometimes you want to do amazing things, but budget restrains you, but, um, in an ideal world, we could just do screen printing. Right. And then, yeah. Uh, and I feel like there's like some artistry to that as well. Like it just feels like more special if it's mm. screen printed. Um, yeah, right. it, it even has like some tactile tipness to it. Like, uh, you can like feel the screen print on the glass and it just like on. feels super nice. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think this is a nice, nice time. Maybe do like a really brief, like a recap of what we've done um, sure. today, and then we can kind of lead in a bit. Um, what we well, no, we'll save for suspense for tomorrow. But definitely a nice recap <laughs> of uh, well, if you wait to come back for tomorrow, of course. Um, but maybe like a two or three minute chat about what we've um, from the start, yeah, right up until now, and then um, and then we're good to go. Sure. Um, so um, I'll start with like an overview of the brief. So we talked about this client called Oak Street. Um, they had their own logo, but they DIY'd it. Um, and they're wanting something that's more um, 
matching to their uh, target audience, which is um, people that uh, are working remote and also like friends that come and they just want to like hang out. Um, so the descriptor words were organic, um, approachable and community. Um, and then we talked about this mood board over here um, to show the client. Um, and then for the actual logo designs, we started with uh, sketches and then rough sketches of like what the um, package design could look like. Um, then we did some uh, pro tips on how to make these uh, logos with the radial tool. Um, and then we did um, some selections here, uh, played around with typography, um, and then matched the typography to um, these different uh, logo marks. Um, we played around with color over here based off of uh, inspiration. Um, and then we've done some light um, concepting for tomorrow. Nice. I feel like, do you feel like the whole process is kind of like almost like flown by? Plus when you're obviously talking through as well, it does go, <laughs> it does go yeah. pretty quick, right? It seems like but, five um, minutes for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I mean, because we definitely got a few more minutes left, actually. But I mean, we've, um, can you zoom a bit more, actually, on the... On the, the final? Or yeah, the I mean, on, on the color palettes. I'm wondering, I mean, even mixing, I mean, we've got, like, say, two or three minutes left. I mean, you could do, like, a mix between some of the colors. So, like, if the yeah. icon, um, just putting it out there as, as, a, as an option. Yeah, um, that's actually, um, that's a really good point. And this is like another tool that um, I haven't used in a while, but like, <laughs> fingers crossed, I still remember how to use it. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the blend tool. So uh, when you have like a color scheme like that, this, it's like really great to kind of have a almost like a, a gradient of like the different colors that are within these two. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do is you can select two shapes and then you go to blend um, and then make, and then it makes this nice gradient here. And you can like, you can make this as long as you want, or you can like change the color too. Um, nice. But what's really awesome about it is even though this is a gradient, you can um, take the eyedropper tool and then you can just like select in between. Um, and then it'll give you, um, Basically, it's like mixing paint together and like mm -hmm. um, coming up with uh, new colors for that. And then when you do this, you know that it's still um, very cohesive to the brand because you're already using two colors that already exist in the brand. So um, that's like another uh, tool that I use sometimes. I feel like as well, that is funny because that swatch, I know there's a whole, um, I don't want to say worth political, but there's a whole methodology behind how people like their coffees and the strength. And um, mm -hmm. that could, it's more maybe with tea, I guess, than it is with coffee. I'm not sure, maybe it's the same actually, but um, yeah, I could totally see that working as like, almost like a flip book. Um, I guess kind of, you know, selecting, are you a milky kind of coffee guy? Do you mm -hmm. like your dark kind of coffee? Um, just out of curiosity, do you, do you have it dark, strong, milky? I usually have I it with, um, <laughs> I either have it with almond milk or oat milk, like depending on what's available. Yeah, we've definitely, um, indulged more in the oatmeal since since, yeah. <laughs> since the lockdown period maybe because we're trying to keep more track of what we put in our bodies but um but no that's a great tool to to that gradient um and seeing how it would work because i guess as well even if you with the logo itself you could maybe do some palettes where or even we're doing the percentage where the logo is the type is obviously one color and yeah. the icon could be the same but maybe like slightly um lower in opacity just so it feels like a bit more more coherent um but I guess, yeah, there's definitely a lot of things you can kind of have fun and, and play around. I'm quite curious to see how that would, yeah, because that would work quite well. Yeah, there, it gives it a little bit of uh, breadth. Yeah, I think that works, that works really, really well. Um, and again, it's always being, because that's a good thing we never mentioned, but actually where you've got your, on the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, of your bottle mock-ups, depending on what the color of the product is, that's another reason why obviously the the, the color palette of what the load can be, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, that brown wouldn't look that great on, on that brown liquid. Um, so again, I mean, that kind of comes down to as well, really digging deep into what the brand is about and you know, the, the product itself um, and, what, and what they're using. But um, that's awesome. I mean, Kevin, this whole process, how have you found, so again, we've gonna be got like, a minute or so before we do like a nice little, recap, <laughs> little roundup. But how have you felt? I mean, day one, it's it's flown by. Um, how have you found it as an experience? 
Yeah, I think it's been a really good experience. Um, I'm definitely like much calmer now. <laughs> I didn't know what it was going to be like, uh, but yeah, like I, I, I think that um, I had a great time and uh, it's gone by so fast for me. So nice, nice. Well, it's been a pleasure to host you, man. I know we, when we had our little catch up this week, we sort of said about the idea of it being a bit nerve wracking for the first day, but second day, on a, uh, first day, you've been an actual dude. So it's been great. Um, so uh, for the lovely people in the chat, um, just to kind of a reminder, we'll be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific for part two of Kevin Craft's uh, next segment. And you can join us there where he will be creating uh, some mock-ups uh, with different packaging uh, for his logo. And Adobe Live will be back tomorrow morning uh, for Photoshop Creative Challenge with Paul Tranny. So definitely stay in touch. Kevin, my man, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to host you. You've enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. I know I feel like everyone in the chat, I'm sure, are looking forward to uh, to part two. Um, and as always, of course, a massive thank you to everyone who's joined us as well, whether it's on YouTube, Barnes. Obviously, without you guys, there is no stream. Uh, so a massive welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, really <laughs> happened. Uh, and of course, to our Adobe moderators for keeping everything uh, safe in the chat. So on that note, um, whatever you get up to guys, remember, do have a smile on your face. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Take care, bye.